tear this thing apart to get into the bearing you need to remove the six screws that separate the two plates the lower plate which is sealed down to the RV you do not want to disturb the sealer leave those all alone there you don't have to get into that part take the six excuse me, eight screws out around the this mid ring here this one here is a little tricky to get to but if you've got a long enough fit you can get in there and get it out now I like to take this cover off this makes things a little easier don't have to though you can access it from below if you want to now this separates from the rest of the separates from the rest of the dish so you can access everything in here note the gasket everything stays there while wow, there's a plastic plate and everything that all stays and of course this isn't on a roof of an RV but it, this would be sealed down screwed down and sealed down on your RV while you're doing this. So this is something just to get it apart to this to this state. Okay. Next thing to do is to take off all of the coax cables. You can actually do this first if you want. Take off all the coax cables and then you need to remove the coax cable connectors from this housing. There's a wa there's a nut and a washer on each one of them. And then these will push in. Now before you take them all out, be sure and look at the color codes on all of these um, connectors that go through here because they are color coded and the color does matter. The C cable is the important one, especially on the, uh, the Swim 3 dishes. So that's how you get it to this point. You'll have all of these taken off, ready to push in. You do not have to take this off if you've got room to lift it up and move it around on your roof of your coach with this, without this cable getting pinched too tight. You can take this off if you want to. You do not have to. Now I'm moving over to a mock-up. We've already taken the nuts and the washers off of all of these. Make a note of what color each one of these connectors is before you pull them out. You do not have to take this off, the, the power data cable. Um, we've got it all off. This would still be all mounted down or uh, setting on the mounting like we did on the last part of the video. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to flip this up very carefully and take the data cable loose from the dish down. Now make sure that your power supply inside is all unplugged and everything before you do this. You can unplug it from the back of the indoor box or whatever you want, but make sure the power is all off. And then pull this connector apart. This connector has a little black tab on it that you push down and it releases it. There's a little notch on the top here that it clips into. So you get that free, take these loose. Like I said, make sure you record which ones go A, B, C, and D. And then you have to take this clamp off right here. And that's a short screw. Set that aside. We're going to have to put it back on later. And now this is all loose, so you can kind of tuck it up there. There's no electronics or other motors in here other than the azimuth motor. And this is just for mock-up. So you can see how this comes apart. Okay, we're going to flip this back down again, and we're going to take the six screws off that hold the bearing assembly in place. It's real simple. Make sure when you put these back in, you don't put them in too tight. They can strip, but they're also self-threading, so you got to make sure that you get them in just right. I do it all the time, so I'm pretty comfortable with it. But uh, it's one of those things that uh, you've got to make sure they're tight, but not overly tight. This will just lift right off now. Cables will come with it. 
You don't have to do anything more with this other than set it down. You may want to get somebody to help you because you're going to have the dish on it and everything. It's going to be a lot heavier than this mock-up is. This is just some spare parts I had laying around so you can understand. Okay, bearing rings. There's, there's bearings on the top and, and then underneath of this gear ring. Okay, there's, there's pieces here. There's a white, an orange, and a black ring. And then there's a white ring in the center with a notch on it. This knot, this is your timing notch. Okay, this goes around inside here, inside of this bearing, and it slides in between these two little points here. And that's what allows the dish to do more than a 360 degree turn. We'll go into that a little bit more when I, I'm putting it back together. For right now, just set this stuff aside. We're gonna get a eighth inch Allen head bit, hex bit, we're going to take the six screws around this ring off. This, this outer ring here just floats around and you can feel there's a bearing underneath it, but it's still pretty sloppy yet. I've only got four screws in here because this is just a mock-up. So I'm going to take these four screws out so I can take this ring off, this bearing ring, or uh, excuse me, this gear ring and bearing. You'll see what I'm going to do here in a minute that'll really help this thing get tighter. Okay, so we've got all six of them off. We lift this off. You kind of note where this is at. These two little notch things here, they're nubs that stick up, go toward the back of this, not quite straight back, but a little bit counterclockwise of it. These screws here are timed, so you cannot put this on wrong if you get all the screws in it. They're, they're, some of them are farther apart than others, so you can't put it on wrong. We're just going to set that aside for the moment. And what we're going to do now is we're going to lift this off. This whole, this whole thing comes right off of here. No problem now, now that that gear's gone. And there's three pieces to the bearing in the bottom of that. There's a bottom race, there's the bearing ring, and a top race. Okay, what we're going to do right now is take the bottom race off, set it aside we're going to grab the black ring that was on the top this black ring has some plastic on it sticking out a little bit right here and this plastic will hold it in there a little bit straighter and make it much more solid and the bearing surface will be much more tight and it'll just work so much better you'll be amazed okay i'm going to make sure this is with the bearings the, the rounded side up the dish side where the bearings roll goes in there and then you just you got to kind of push it down in there. Those little little tiny tabs that stick out on the outside is what helps this ring stay more centered in here, and it makes it tighter in here. Okay, and we're going to grab the orange ring and and then the top white ring, back right back in, and it should roll just like a bearing, real easy. You can grab a hold of the bottom, and you can see that it it'll be a little bit tighter in there. Okay, make sure it all rolls. Black ring, red ring, or orange ring, and then the top ring. Now we're gonna grab the, the gear. We're gonna put the gear back in. Notice this little ear right here, and this little ear right here. And then there's a ring that goes all the way around between them. And then in between these two here, this way, there's no ring. So that's where this timing gear goes in. Just like this. So it's gonna go in like this. And we'll go, we'll, we're going to talk about that a little bit more when we get done. But right now, we screw this down. Should set it in here. Should set right down in place. And then the, this, this bar right here, this part should be just a little bit counterclockwise of that raised up section where this, where this wires go in. Okay, we're going to find the screws. We're going to screw them in. I like to hand start them before I use the screw gun. Just to make sure I get them right. I've only got four screws here, but you're going to put in a six all the way around, the ones that you just took off. It's real easy. Make sure your screw gun is set to where it doesn't really crank them down too tight. We don't like them to go too tight because you can strip this aluminum cast on real easy. We're going to screw these down. The stainless screws are soft, so make sure you get your Allen down in there good before you tighten it down. Okay? That's back on. We're going to switch back to the 5 16 where we're going to use that in a minute. Now, when you lift up on this, 
you'll notice if you pull up on it on both sides, it's a lot tighter than it was before. It's a lot more centered in there and not able to slide and slop around like it did before. Okay, now we're going to put the top bearing together. Same thing as the bottom. It's going to be a white ring this time, just like we took it apart. And it's going to be the bearing ring with the ball bearings in it, Then it's going to be a top ring. And they just roll around. It should all roll real easily. Everything, no binding or anything like that. should fit in there pretty good. Okay, now, this ring right here has this notch, this, this nub sticking out on the inside. I don't know what else to call it. And there, it's flat on this side. And on this side here, there's a little bit of a stair step right in the bottom of it. And I'll do a, probably do a zoom in on it before you, so you can see and understand what that is. That Here's what I'm talking about when I say there's a flat side, and then there's a side with a notch in it. That little, that little notch right there has to go, it goes in between these two nubs that we were talking about earlier that stick up and this ring goes all the way around, but there's a shallower spot there. It goes in with that notch facing down in between those two. Has to be in between. That's what allows this dish to, there's a, there's a notch sticking down in the bottom of that piece and it allows this dish to turn all the way around to 360 degrees plus a little bit more. That's how it can actually go around and if it's a satellites are lined up in between, it, you know, where the stop is, it, can't, it doesn't just stop and say, oh, I can't see them that way, and then go around and they say, oh, I can't see them that way. It actually allows it to move past center so that it can lock onto the satellites if they're in the stop area. Okay? So that's how it goes. Take this ring, put it all the way counterclockwise against that stop. Okay? Here's a little close-up on this area that I'm talking about. These things stick up here and there's a raised area around here and on this side there's a raised area around here. This plastic goes in here with the stair step side down and it goes in between there and there. Just like that. So when you're assembling this dish you need to put this all the way around to the counterclockwise position there and then that little post that I just showed you goes over here anywhere in the middle of this. That's the way it's assembled. And we're going to pick up the turret assembly, the top of it. We're going to look inside here. Now of course the electronics box would be here and the motor would be in here. This is just mock-up. But you see there's, a, there's this nub down in the bottom down here and I'll try to do a, a zoom in on that one too. This is what I'm talking about when I say the nub sticking up. It sticks up higher than this surface does right here. Normally there's an electronics package sitting in here about like so. So you'll see what it kind of looks like over there in the corner. That, little, that nub that sticks down runs around and pushes this white ring back and forth. Okay, we want this nub, this plastic to be all the way counterclockwise against that stop. Then we're going to put this nub over here in between these two areas so that it rides in the proper space and that's the proper timing. Take your cables, stick them down in there, put that nub so it's down right where it needs to be. Make sure you're not pinching your cables or anything. And this kind of just wiggles a little bit and it should drop, it should drop right down in place and be ready to go. Now we're going to lift up on this bottom ring with Now we're going to lift up on this bottom ring with your fingers. You'll feel it moving around. And it should, everything should kind of be, you just kind of wiggle a little, a little bit, make sure it's, it's kind of centering itself up there. And then you got to turn it around until you can see down through the screw hole here on the top to one of the screw holes in that bottom ring. And then hand tighten, finger tighten, one of the screws in there. Grab one of them going 180 degrees around from it. You got to kind of wiggle things around a little bit, get them in place, start that in there. And you put the other two in, kind of start them a little bit, make sure they're, everything's seating up. Here again, 
don't go too tight with your screw gun you'll kind of feel it when they when they come together right can't be too tight you'll strip the screws out can't be too loose or it won't work right Okay, that's it. Now, look at this. It's, it's just got a little lash in the gear now, which is good. It doesn't wiggle back and forth. I'll do a zoom in on that. And it's much tighter. It's, it's definitely a much, much tighter fit. So then what we're going to do now is flip this back up. We've got to take this. Like I said before, this is a mock-up. It's missing some parts, but that's okay. We don't care about that. They can all stay in there. We're going to take this short screw. Put it on this side with the clamp, face them down like this so that it holds the wires up into this groove. And start it, this in here and tighten it up. That's it. And you're going to feed your cables. You know, make sure you, you, you do just like it was when you pulled it apart. I don't know if it's black, red. Some of them might be a little bit different. That's why you want to make sure that you do it look at it before you take it apart. And these are all going to kind of stick through here. There's extra ones on this particular dish because the cable system is for an older um, 3005 series and this is a this is a dish or or a direct TV swim system that we have now. The cable, the power data cable, there's a little point on there that you can feel with your finger and that little point goes to the spot where the clip is. And these have got squared off and rounded corners, so you can't really push it together the wrong way unless you really force it. So if you just get it wiggled together, you see the, the little point lines up with the with the little clip and just give it a little shove together and it'll clip just like that. Here's a close-up of the cable and how it goes together. You see those the little pin here on the top lines up with the the clip that holds it in place. It's all set in here and then we're going to turn this back over again and then we're going to put the put the nuts on. The washers go first then the nuts go on to hold these all in place. Like I said there's an extra one. They, the older dishes had a four holes in them instead of just three. We're going to run that back in up all of those Tighten them up, and then we do this one, and we do this one. Um, there might be some caps on these two, and a lot of models there is, and that's basically put back together. But just see how much tighter this is. It's just it, it won't flop around in the wind now. It's going to be way better. Um, little lash for the gear. That's okay. It can't be too tight, but it's just perfect. That's going to be all just the way we want it to be. I may have shown you this in the other video, but the cables go on here, go, go into the there, making sure you got the right colors in the right places. Put the washer on, start the nut on real careful with your fingers. All three of these, run this up. And that's it. Now we're going to put this back together again. We're going to put the cover back on. Making sure that this, this connector is all ready together. Put the cover back on. I always like to tighten or start these with my fingers first because they are kind of a self self tapping system. And if you just start ramming them in, then they threads cross and things get a little tight. So these work really good if you if you do them the way you're supposed to. Okay. Now when you go to put this back down, make sure that your plastic. And your gasket, your gasket may look a little bit different than this one. Um, that goes in there. And you should be able to read the do not remove from the bottom without it being in a mirror image or anything. You've got it right if you do that. They just fit over these little tabs like this. Um, and then you carefully lift the dish up and set it back down on top of those. And it should kind of drop down in. Drop down in place in my heat arm kind of messing me up a little bit there. But that'll drop in place. This is a little little more 
It's actually a little easier on the roof of the RV than it is trying to do it on this picnic table. And then you want to put all of these screws back in place. There should be eight of them. And I'll go back in. And you, I like to put, I don't tighten any of them up until you get them all kind of started and stuck in there. That way you don't get it cranked down and find out that it doesn't really kind of want to fit that way. You got to kind of wiggle them a little bit and get them all in place. This one here is the hardest one. Get it back in there. If you've got a long enough bit on your driver, you can go right in here and run her down. And then go all the way around, run these all down, get them good and snug. The gasket will seal up in there. And then you'll have a nice tight barrier. And that's it. Got a nice tight bearing assembly on this one. This one's not as tight as that, that one is over there now. I'm not sure this one's had its black ring flipped on it. Um, it may or may not have, but I just wanted to use this so you could see the bottom portion of it. Um, that one over there that we just did is nice and tight. But this is actually okay. This one here is a little looser than that one, but it will still be tight enough that it won't flop in the wind enough to, to make you go off signal um, as the wind blows and blows on the dish. It, it should be okay. Well, that's kind of the way it goes. Hook your coax cables up like they were. If this is a swim dish, these aren't even used. These are capped off. And the C cable is the only one that's used. This should be okay. Everything should be ready to go. Make sure your caps are on here. We want to keep all the moisture out that we don't need.